Valtrin Network. What's up, guys, and welcome to the DC vs. Marvel podcast, where we talk about the latest DC and Marvel movie news. My name is Urs, and I'm your regular DC fanboy once again in the red corner, uh, representing Marvel Comics, my boy Ed. How you doing, bro? I'm great, man. I'm good. How can I not be? <laughs> I'm a Marvel it's, fan. Life's always good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, it's, it's funny, man. I kind of, uh, it, it, it's weird. Like, I've actually had this feeling this week that it's actually been like you know my my life's actually pretty good there's nothing to complain about you know? <laughs> why why are you complaining about 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 anything you know what i mean so um so yeah it's been uh it's been it's been pretty good this end there as well um we uh we've got so much news to talk about there today man um mm. and unfortunately pretty much all dc and what a surprise all bloody negative as well um but we're gonna be going through uh we're gonna be going through some stuff about the cw you get what uh, you want for man you've been asking DC- for dc news and now you got it <laughs> yeah exactly uh D- dc eu rebooting rumors uh book of boba review um peacemaker we'll talk about the alien series the rumors of the alien stuff there as well um and the latest um, kind of um, things that Andrew Garfield's been saying, man. I think we should actually make make that like a feature. Like, what has Andrew Garfield said this week? Yeah, because he's like, he if he was if he was, you know, that's the thing. He's like the least believable guy you could you could ever think of, man. Because you know he's uh, he's he's you know he's doing it for the fans. He's he's keeping exactly. stuff. Exactly. You know, he's at, keeping secrets. Know. He's trying not to blur everything <laughs> out like some people always do. Yeah, wow. yeah, uh, but that's that's the thing, man. Whatever the thing is, whatever Andrew Garfield says, you kind of got to maybe maybe expect the opposite, right? Um, but before we do all of that, uh, we've got some questions that we didn't actually answer there uh, before, um, and we're also going to round up today's show as we talked about there in the previous show there um, with our winners and losers of uh, 2021 there as well, uh, and what we're looking wow. forward to in uh, in 2022. Um, so. Um, a couple of episodes ago, we were, uh, we were asked by a, um, a listener about um, if we could watch one um, DC, Marvel, comic book, whatever property again for the first time, one. what would we watch and, and, and why? Um, oh, and yeah. Just one. I think just, well, just one property, basically. So like, you know, one one entity so it could be i guess a trilogy or a quadrilogy or you know god knows what oh, man. like just wishing that i had amnesia and I, i'm laid up in a hospital bed and i this doesn't count as because it's not just one thing but that would be the dream just the head injury where i could just re-watch <laughs> all of the mcu in one goal <laughs> not knowing what's gonna happen that would just be the dream for me like yeah wow literally watching it from <laughs> from start yeah. to finish because that would be to do. insane <laughs> exactly exactly just lying in bed like uh, you can't change the channel or anything and it just exactly. plays it in chronological so order it. right disney Plus chronological order going. but yeah um what, oh it's hard because part of me would love to watch like the uh, Infinity War and Endgame again without knowing, you know, what happens. Mm. But then again, Dark Knight was a bit of a, an experience as well to kind of give, you know, you guys some credit. That was a kind of a nice experience to watch back when it came out. Because mm. it was just, you didn't see superhero films like that. Like this, yeah. it was just a, it was a real film, it wasn't just a popcorn movie. And it just blew yeah, my mind. By a proper director, exactly. uh, you know, he's actually been actually been, you know, aligned to this. Exactly. So you go you go in with the entire MCU basically, right? Is that what <laughs> if, if, if I have no rules and not bound by oh. any parameters, then it would be that. But <laughs> I'm gonna give DC credit and say Dark Knight. I'm gonna I'm gonna stick to that. I'm gonna leave you guys. Okay. No. Okay, cool. Um, I'm gonna step slightly outside the box and say the alien series Pro- alien probably you know Still alien weird. one and two let's forget the rest okay right but just just to see like for the first time i remember when the first time when i saw alien uh, aliens alien two right 
Um, and I'm just like, this is like the most coolest film that yeah, I've he's seen. A, he's a great <laughs> right? film. It's just like absolutely, absolutely amazing. Um, although I don't know whether that's allowed because the kind of the novels yeah. came after it. Yeah, so, it, didn't, it wasn't spawned you know, from a not, comic book property. It kind of it's created not it allowed. Yeah. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with you guys, and I'm gonna say the first Iron Man. Oh. Right. And for the same reason that you're giving about the Dark Knight is the same feeling that I got when I watched the first Iron Man, because, you know, I've seen like I've seen Iron Man again like on my TV and on my projector and stuff like that. All the other ones afterwards. Right. The CGI gets more and more obvious. And we were kind of showing like the kids because we're showing like this recap of like, you know, Civil War and stuff so they could get up to speed with like Spider-Man and things like that. And there's a bit when like uh, Rhodey and um, uh, and uh, you know uh, Tony Stark are walking around, and it literally looks like somebody's got their head on a stick and just painted the Iron Man stuff underneath. <laughs> right? It's that bad. I don't know whether it's like you know because it's on a 4K and it's like so high definition that it just mm. looks like that. But when you see the first Iron Man, it literally looks like there is a freaking Iron Man flying around. Like, even now, like, good. you look at it. It, it, it is flipping amazing. Um, and just, to, you know, I like the fact that it was kind of, it was kind of ground in. There was this, the, you know, basically, that like, Tony Stark was this absolute just asshole guy, man. He got his comeuppance, right? Mm-hmm. But then he redeemed himself, right? And I just, I love those kind of stories, man, where it's just like, you know, you're an absolute idiot and we're going to tell you you're an idiot and you learn it. But it's not like, nowadays where they have these films where it's like okay this guy's an idiot let's junk him and then that's it you're done see you later you're an idiot you're finished your life's done right um he actually had a chance to kind of redeem himself and and bring himself out which you know i still really love that film man that's you know one of you know one of my favorites basically so yeah i'd have to i have to have to give it i'd have to give it to uh give it to that one so interesting the marvel guy went for a dc property and a dc (laughs) guy went for marvel property what the hell is going on (laughs) exactly it's uh it's it's an odd one it's an odd one man so um so yeah so that's that's basically uh what we'll go for should we do uh we also got um we also got asked um as well there um let me see if i can find the guy's name because I can't remember. Uh, anyway, he'll know. <laughs> Basically, um, so well, he's asking like <laughs> whoever it is. Yeah, I'll 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 put it on the uh, on the notes of the podcast, whatever. But basically, um, uh, it was you guys have lots of collectibles and stuff. Mm. Um, have you ever and would you ever go into digital collectibles? And uh, if so, what ones you know would you like? Um, before I, before we answer that, I would like just wanna, NFTs. Uh, well, I don't know, just any d- guy said digital collectible. So I assume that means you can get like these digital trading cards and stuff online and things like that. And also NFTs. Um, but yeah, don't don't take this advice as like, oh, I'm going to go and invest into, <laughs> into this and this. Yeah, because this ain't no financial advice on this show. <laughs> uh, so if you're talking about digital collectibles, uh, I would probably say no, because I just you see like you know from uh, from you know when i've been talking about like steel books and all this kind of stuff i just like to have the physical stuff like you know yeah. with me you know what i mean Same. um i like the feel of just opening the package and being like wow that's so nice like um i don't remember back uh, you know whether you had back in the day when you used to like open and have like um I uh, go to like a record shop and there was like, you know, mm-hmm. tapes and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I spent ages like opening because uh, what they used to do is they used to take the tapes out yeah. so you couldn't actually nick, <laughs> nick yeah, the tape, yeah. right? And the CDs. So you go, yeah. but they had like a proper like thing you could take it out and you could look at it open. They had art in there and had the yeah, had, had like a booklet. blog by the people. I used to it's, love it's that. So... I would just stare at that for hours while I was listening to the music <laughs> and reading the lyrics and everything that was on there and look at the photos. Yeah, it's true. I am a sort of person that does like that tactile feel of just staring at things. Cause I was always that kid that had to just stare at catalogs because I couldn't have the toys. So that was like how <laughs> my world, how I would just kind of generate things in my head. So when you actually get to physically hold things, it's like, yes. So, yeah. But if I had to, I'm not even lying. I was actually looking up to see if there are any interesting Marvel NFTs. I've been contemplating. 
mm. dipping my foot in it. But then I think it's going to go the way that everything else goes in this, in that sort of realm. Mm. It's going to, it's big now, but it will pop in a... The problem, the problem with NFTs shit. is you have to read what type of NFT it is, right? So, so basically like um, some NFTs, you own the art and you have a license to the art, right? Yeah. And that's the best possible thing because yeah. like, that's say for example, if you got like a picture of, I don't know, Iron Man or Spider-Man or something, you can make t-shirts off it. You can make, you know, uh, bags, you can make all that. You could, you'd have the license to sell it online, right? But 90% of NFTs are basically like the treasure map kind of theory, right? Which is like, basically, the so what an NFT is, imagine if like you're a pirate and somebody says to you, right, I know where this treasure is and the, um, you know, I've got a treasure map to get to the treasure, right? You're like, okay, cool. How, are you going to tell me where it is? And they're like, oh, it's going to cost you like, you pay me 10,000 gold, right? And I'll tell you where this treasure is that is worth, hundred thousand gold you're like right okay <laughs> here you go it's ten thousand gold the guy gives you the treasure map you go to the treasure the treasure's there but it's already been taken right and then you say to the guy that you got the treasure map off uh what the hell there's no treasure there right he said nah i sold you the treasure map yeah and i told <laughs> you how to get to this place i'm not selling you the actual thing that was... and that's what nfts are what scam website is that that's NFTs. That's what an NFT is. An NFT is not that you own the art. You basically own the directions of how to get to a place where you can download that art, right? And that's why it's so comical. There's a guy, he's created a thing called NFT Bay, right? I've been listening to his podcast. That is hilarious. Basically, what he does is he goes, he finds, he reads the fine print on people's contracts on NFTs. Mm. If it says that they don't actually own the art, he downloads it, puts it up on NFT Bay, right? Wow. And you can basically just go there and download all of this art for like free because nobody bloody owns it, right? Um, so, yeah. Yeah, it's just it currently unless you own the art it's a bit of a scam so yeah guys i would probably stay away from that you, nobody can take away something there for you if you got a book or if you got a blu-ray or you got whatever yeah. you know you just you always got that kind of thing there exactly. they have to go the extra step of breaking down your front door going through your window in order to get into your house to get hold of it and no, <laughs> no. Yeah, exactly. And they're gonna get a fight. <laughs> exactly. Nah, nah, <laughs> you're gonna challenge them, make it off. <laughs> yeah, and then if and then if they take it after that massive fight, then okay, fine. Then, then was, they earned fair it. Fair enough. Fair enough. They <laughs> are worthy. Yeah, then. You earned it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, talking about worthless stuff, let's go into um, our our first subject, which is <laughs> the CW. Right, and the CW is basically <laughs> uh, is basically gonna be sold. Right. Um, this comes up um, after the Deadline article saying that the CW has never been profitable. Like literally from its inception, is it's so never bizarre. been profitable. Like that. that- Whoever's running that station, mate, it that how is that even possible? You're selling advertising, but how the, the shows aren't exactly the biggest budget shows going to so how teenagers love that shit. How is this? How, yeah, that is a terribly wrong business. To be honest, I've I'm honestly wondering how it's even been going for that long. I mean, you've got <laughs> you know, the, the latest, the latest Batwoman episode had 134,000 <laughs> views. That's mad. <laughs> On the on the live on the live show, right? And um, the highest show, which is Flash, gets about seven hundred thousand. Now, I mean, there are YouTubers who get that on a flipping daily basis, but, right? Yeah. You know, just <laughs> playing through games and shit. You know, just literally like they'll, they'll get that in way. Like, oh, putting on makeup, <laughs> putting on makeup. Yeah, exactly. So, and and then you kind of think, okay, well, how has this thing ever made money? Um, in a way, I guess is a good thing that is selling. In another way, I kind of think, who are they going to sell to? Right. Well, I was reading up, and it's likely that it, it that uh, Warner will still own a percentage of CW, but the majority will be to whoever. But they will still produce the shows through their through the deal. But hopefully, if it if you know it, the majority does get sold off, they will demand higher quality from <laughs> what they've been doing up until this point. So it could be a very good thing for CW. That they um, and the thing is, will Discovery even want that? Won't Discovery want to 
have all their own stuff? Will they want the stuff to be going on to another channel? Because, you know, with Discovery, right? <laughs> Discovery of them are basically the, the opposite of Warner Brothers, right? Warner Brothers seem to be allergic to making money, whereas, like, Discovery are the opposite. They'll do anything for money, right? They'll make any old shit basically and just run it into the ground yeah. to kind of make money off it there's there's like um, i i got this trial for discovery plus right and the majority of it is stuff like 40 day fiance yeah my my 800 pound <laughs> 800 pound life um 800 pound twins uh <laughs> You know, um, like 10, I mainly did it because I was like, there's a crap load of true crime stuff on here that I just want to oh, watch. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and that's it, man. So, yeah, they, but they don't, they don't seem to have any shows that are kind of produced. There's stuff, you know, it's kind of like, okay, mainly documentaries where they're kind of following mm. other people and things like that and doing things. Um, and I think maybe, yeah, that could be, that could be interesting. I, I really want to see, right? I don't know whether this would interest you at all, but back in the day, I used to watch a lot of these um, uh, kind of docudrama kind of things about like Gumball Rally and stuff like that, where these people got these super like expensive yeah. cars and they went and things. Um, and they were really kind of like well-produced and it was like a, basically like watching a movie. Um, and they started doing some of those for like, you know, conventions and all this kind of stuff. And I'd really like to see like a really kind of, good quality um docudrama on like a on like a comic con or something like that you know from going to them making it the guests yeah. dramas that happened the backstage of them bringing the guests in and you know all this kind of stuff like you know i think that would be that would be quite cool yeah you um, can make a little series out of that you know just the continuation of putting it all together and the, the pre-production of it and the events and then follow maybe one episode to be following someone who's first time at Comic-Con and the headache realizing that it's really hell on earth. I uh, imagine <laughs> yeah. the San Diego version. Is. <laughs> oh yeah. man, that must be, yeah, it must be bad enough. <laughs> yeah, it must be bad enough. And yeah, and then they could like, you know, interview the guests and all that. It would, I think it'd be quite cool, man, having something like that. Mm. Um, but, but I don't know, man, I still... I, when I look look at CW, I kind of think, okay, what is there that I want to watch on it? Um, and it's like, I, 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 okay, fine, they they did Superman and Lois, right? But it's like, how can you carry on with stuff like Legends of Tomorrow and things like that, and then just abandon Swamp Thing, right? Oh, it's like never forgive. You know, <laughs> it's like, what's the matter with you people, right? You know, come on, you have a, but I guess they cater for that literally for that you know uh teenage young, yeah, kind of adult you know kind of i used to love cw back in the day when it was called whatever it was called back then when it was like buffy and angel and all that like where, where did they go wrong it's crazy i think they were they they just went and they got too many properties and they just spread themselves just over those things like they could have just kept like okay the flash and maybe another show maybe maybe another couple of shows on top of that and then just said right we'll spread ourselves over that they rather than being caring like, though the quality control they just stop giving a damn like you can tell that people making these shows just partly it's probably because their shows still go run for like 20 something episodes half the time but yeah yeah there's it's no effort put into this stuff it's like yeah it's not yeah, it's not great. It's not great. Um, but yeah, I mean, the fact that it's not been profitable since, what, 2006 or whatever is absolutely insane because it's like, you know, if you're running a business and there's 15 years of no of no profit, wouldn't you be like, okay, it's time to shut this yeah, bloody thing down or, you know, or let's just strip it of like anything good and then just get rid of, you know, all this mm. other, all this other, other kind of stuff, man. Um, it's just crazy. Uh, Did you see someone like Netflix picking this up? I guess it depends on what the price tag is. But if it's not being profitable, then it can't. The price tag can't be that much. I think it would be Amazon or someone. I think it would be. Channels. Yeah, I think it would be. I think it would be awesome if they did it, and I think it would be a massive kind of thing of like, okay, fine, we made some shows there. Uh, you know, for like Marvel shows and we can potentially use that same ability to 
go and say do a Nightwing in the same kind of vein that they made a Daredevil and you know uh, like a re- Red Hood kind of thing in the same way that Punisher was and stuff. But that's HBO if, Max is never going to allow it. Yeah, that's yeah exactly. That's if those contracts carry over with the properties, but they probably won't. Yeah. So and the thing is, HBO is just going to say sod it. We're never going to allow it. Um, yeah. You know, um, and it's more likely there's going to be stuff like. Um, isn't there things like 4400 and Riverdale yeah. and stuff like that? Super it's more likely they're going to get things like that that are going to move over um, and they're going to be taken over and, and kind of done there, basically, yeah. um, which is the stuff that, you know, I don't know. I don't know what what CW has the rights to because it would be crazy if they actually had the rights to, like, certain things and you're like what yeah. the hell man why did they sell over these rights of these properties to to them kind of thing it's true um, you'd think they just know. move everything just for content just move it all over to HBO Max H- just to have content on there and just hey, yeah. just buying the name yeah I mean there's like certain things like you know like Star Girls not going to continue anymore I don't think like you know Black Lightning Flash Batwoman I mean these shows don't really put up my, many numbers you know what i mean but yeah. i don't know i am not gonna i'm not gonna shed a tear over the I, CW, did also CW love supernatural though for a while did love but it hasn't that gone on for like, like 200 years finished now or yeah <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it went on way longer than they should have should have ended that season five <laughs> but then they just kept on bringing them back from hell there's only so many times your lead characters can keep dying <laughs> oh yeah that's the thing man that, that's the other thing as well you know um uh what's it called like um how many adverts i keep seeing for sandman is it sandman coming soon it's like well give me a date man <laughs> i need a date when this when this thing is cut it's better come at the end of last year right but it's like you know i i don't know man it's, it's good though it's i'm doing the work i'm helping you guys i've been converting people to the audio book and people are loving it so yeah, yeah. awesome it's awesome yeah yeah, that's that's the thing, man. The audiobook is uh, amazing. One, you know, one and two for them. Yeah, um, both both of them. So yeah, um, let's stick with DC, 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 DC EU, I guess. Uh, there again, um, and we're hearing kind of rumors, and this has been all over, man. You should see the carnage on the DC forums right now. Oh my god, it's hilarious. I if know. you want to ever. <laughs> Their God is dead. Their God is dead. If you want to have a laugh about this, oh my goodness me. So, um, guys, if you haven't heard, um, apparent rumors that we're hearing are basically that The Flash is going to, in effect, be a reboot of the the DCEU, which is, in effect, the worst kept secret. Yeah, Yeah, it's the worst kept secret ever. Because if it's the Flashpoint storyline, that's the whole point of it. You kind of reset. It gives them the opportunity because we know actors weren't going to certain actors weren't going to be coming back. So it's kind of obvious, really. I think the main issue is what is resetting to Mm. um, and and what it's resetting to doesn't really make a great deal of sense. So apparently um, the reset is that basically we're in effect going to get a um a michael keaton batman a geriatric batman again on tv um the obviously the batman with um with uh matt reeves and rob pattinson and and zoe kravitz uh that's all gonna be separate uh yeah, from this yeah, kind of yeah. thing but the one that we're getting is the one that is um mark keaton's batman well technically mental- is he gonna be batman i see him just being because they're basically doing batman of the future without batman on of the future or Batman Beyond, if you're in. But in the Flash, there's somebody in that bat suit, right? True, yeah. And it's I think not that the might... Affleck bat suit. It's the, it's the Keaton bat yeah. suit. Yeah, but I think that but might be like... the only time we see him in the suit, though. When Batgirl yeah. comes along, he's just going to be sat there like Oracle, just at the computer. Go here, Dude go is like 70 years old, man. Like, seriously, what is wrong with you people? <laughs> like, you know, seriously, why? Why would you do that? But, um, but yeah, so we got him. Uh, he's basically, he's mentoring uh, Black Canary, who then decides to mentor um, Black Canary from Birds of Prey, who then decides to go and mentor Batgirl, who then gets introduced to Batman, and then, you know, kind of goes down that route. Uh, also, um, the, the rumor that I saw there today from the same source that kind of leaked a lot of the stuff about No Way Home with the, 
with with the pictures of of Garfield and Maguire with that blue screen and all that kind of stuff, um, is saying that Man of Steel two is actually in development, but it's gonna have have Sasha Kelly's Supergirl in that <laughs> role, Woman of Steel. <laughs> right. um, wow. Woman so, of Steel. So yeah. it ain't Man of Steel 2. Um, What's the point? What's the point of even saying it's a Man of Steel 2 when it obviously ain't? So exactly, exactly. And then uh, it's, you know, clickbait kind of thing, basically, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, and, yeah. Then, um, and then obviously that, uh, that Wonder Woman is going to be um, the leader, in effect. And then we've also got Flash as well, Ezra Mez, Ezra Mez. I bet um, the rock's in the shadows stroking like, yeah, she's the leader for now, but that. if I have my way, I will be the leader. The if the rock, if if Black Adam becomes the leader of Justice League, I'm done, man. I'm honestly, I'm Haven't done. you heard what his um, production I'm done? Because his oh, production no, company's no, co-producing Black no. Adam. <laughs> and they were saying that they yeah, want to yeah, yeah. do Kingdom Come. So they want to get their fingers right in there and yeah. really mold this universe. So, mm. But the thing is, this Seven Bucks production is one of the worst production houses <laughs> terrible. In, this, in the history of production, yeah. right? People might think, oh, yeah, they're, you know, they've made like Jumanji. Or Jumanji does not bloody translate to all the other crap that The Rock has bloody made. Not fool. only that, you know what the common denominator is? The Rock has been in every single one of those films right and he's played so he's the like, exact same role in every exactly, film exactly 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 that is the thing but he's gonna he's gonna flex his acting chops but now by being the oh, so-called shit. anti-hero anti-hero villain so what do you think about this what do you think about the um <laughs> the reboot <laughs> so oh no so so we got batgirl batman being like the mentors for the whole the group so mm-hmm. that girl you got Maybe Canary's in there. You got the Flash. You got this super girl, super woman, whatever she's gonna be, and Wonder Woman. It, it, it basically sounds like they put the creative guys, the creative minds behind CW, <laughs> DC, first, uh, yeah. and they moved them across into the films because this oh, sounds like something they would have done. <laughs> it sounds like what they would do. Maybe that's happened. Maybe that's happened. Yeah. Oh, and Blue Beetle, I mean, maybe as well, down the line. Blue Beetle, I doubt it. I doubt it because Blue Beetle's going some other, some other weird ass way, man. But it's, I, do you know what? I find this, the, the reason why I find this interesting, right, is because there is a particular way to to go about that if you decided to go and do that route and you know i'm not professing myself to be like some major expert or anything like that but i read a few comic books right mm-hmm. and you kind of like look and you say okay if you okay so if you're going to do a bat girl right mm-hmm. the rebirth bat girl to for my opinion is the best one okay and the reason being is is that when she gets shot by the joker in killing joke right yeah. and basically in the previous iteration she becomes oracle right and she goes yeah. and helps out and stuff in this there is um and i won't spoil it for anybody who wants to read it or whatever but there is um this kind of new technology that basically allows her back to get fixed right and she ends up becoming batgirl however as batgirl she is constantly shitting herself that her back's gonna get kicked the you know this this technological I thing that is that. there is going to get damaged. Add um, something unique to yeah. the character, yeah. An element of an added element of danger where things could go wrong. That yeah. would be great. Yeah. So you know that she could she could get par- par- paralyzed. She's constantly second guessing herself. Like, should I go into this area where there's like seven eight henchmen that are kind of in there because you know one of them might get a kick into my back and then you know. I'm done for again. And, you know, it's it's really good because she's constantly doing that. And it, it, there's a real good character arc where she kind of, like, grows oh, into yeah. that role. And if DC want to go dark as well, they could add, like, a drug addiction in there with the painkillers. <laughs> drug addiction. But uh, painkillers yeah, to deal content. with exactly. And then that could be something that <laughs> Michael just Keaton worse. turns up. <laughs> Michael Keaton Intervention. turns up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Keaton with his dope sick uh, mission. Yeah. Well, like, is he is he the guy from Don't Sick or is he is he Batman? <laughs> um, so yeah, and then uh, so, but in order to do that, you have to have the killing joke, right? Mm. So you have to have had a Batman film that is you know multiple Batman films that has introduced all of that kind of world, and then had Joker that basically goes and decides I'm gonna go and shoot 
Jim Gordon's yeah. daughter because he doesn't know she's Batgirl at that exactly. point. He's just kind of that. like, uh, you and know, we need to care about her as well for that to mm. matter. So, yeah, oh, it could stop. all these stories How... are right there. Exactly. Just exactly. it. However, what they're deciding to do is, um, okay, she's a fan of, of, of Batman. She decides, oh, I'm going to go and fight crime by myself. Don't work like that. The whole point in Batman is that he has the tech. He's a billionaire, right? Mm. You cannot be an average dude and just go on the street and start fighting people. You're going to get shot and killed, right? You, you need, yeah. you need um, like... Unless you're blind. With very good unless hearing. you're blind, <laughs> yeah. Unless you're blind with like, uh, you know, um, what is that thing called? Uh, sonar or whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, uh, echolocation. Yeah. Uh, that's it. Echolocation like that. So, yeah, I mean, that is the thing. So, that's for Batgirl. For Supergirl, however, I have a completely different viewpoint because Supergirl for me has never worked without Superman, and the reason being is that. The only thing that ever makes Superman interesting is the fact that he was raised by two humans. And in essence, he kind of is a human, mm. but he's basically got like, um, you know, it's like nature versus nurture kind of thing. Whereas Supergirl is, she's a complete hothead, right? She, as soon as she landed on the earth, she was getting shot at. The army tried to kill her. Yeah, Batman she... tried to kill her. <laughs> yeah, um, it's a love hate relationship with humans and uh, with Earth. But the thing is, do you it, think this is actually Supergirl? I'm guessing it's not going to be Supergirl. This Regular looks Supergirl like, um, yeah. So this looks like the daughter of Lois Lane and, um, you know, uh, and Clark Kent from another universe, um, which is, um, which is kind of looks like the way that they're going. However, um, even with even with that kind of thing, um, unless they're going to replace that same thing with Superman, where it's kind of like, okay, he's fighting against his nature and he's trying to be human while at the same time, you know, uh, trying to be superhuman. And that's the thing. And when they did that with um, Supergirl, the series, they tried to make her like Superman as opposed to make her this kind of crazy hothead who basically is just yeah. like got a trigger finger and stuff. And it didn't work because they tried to make her Superman and it makes no sense because she doesn't have that life that Superman has had. Yeah. So, you know, they put her, oh, I work in the paper for somebody else. And it's just like, mate, that didn't bloody work. So if they decide to do that, then it's going to be utterly stupid. And <laughs> seriously, it's going to be utterly stupid. Um, uh, you know, even, even, with, even with kind of with Batgirl as well, Batgirl has to be seasoned for a long time because who's going to be the tactician of this justice league man who's going to be the one who's like you go and do this you go and do that because uh, kian what is yeah yeah but is 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 wonder woman going to listen to that i don't know <laughs> well, you know, it depends uh, how this flashpoint works is it gonna reset make a universe where everyone's together where they already had the knowledge of each other like it's always been there about. I guess we don't. Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing it will. There's some mad, mad rumors coming out about it, which is why I've kind of just, I've just switched off now and just been like, I'm not listening to a single thing. I'll wait for the next trailer, and then that is that is it. Because basically, like you know, there's there's some people saying, oh, I've seen it. Other people being like, oh, you know, uh, I've seen it, but it's going to major reshoots. There's one guy who basically yes. posted an entire thing, uh, which is like, this is what happens from start to finish. Right In, of the uh, of the film, which film? Uh, Flash. Oh, ooh. yeah, really? Uh, uh, the Flash. So it's like you know, if you go to this thing, this thing called DCU Le EU leaks, and it basically always has this kind of random stuff there in it, basically. But there's only one dude who ever comes out with anything that is has any knowledge behind it, and that's the guy who you know uh, who, who leaked all the stuff about the original justice league and uh you know the no way home stuff and yeah, and the ending of, of infinity you know war is that's and... doing this it's the freaking effects guys that's who did it with the spider-man it's those that people in the effects team that were just like giving yeah. out all these stuff like what the hell it why isn't their yeah. computers stamped with their names on the screen so they can't 
get away with doing it. Yeah. It annoys me that they can, like, I should be grateful, like, yeah, we get all these good juicy nuggets, but, you know, how much better would some of these experiences be if we didn't at least yeah, see? Yeah, yeah. 100%. 100%, man. I mean, this is the thing, like, kind of, you know, um, <laughs> my, um, uh, my, <laughs> Um, my kids have now been watching Spider-Man because they want to watch No uh, No Way Home, right? Mm. So we've been watching all of those kind of things. My my nieces have none of this kind of thing of like, let's not spoil something or let's not tell them something or anything like that, right? So they were asking my daughter, like, oh, you know, what ones have you seen? She's like, oh, I've seen Amazing Spider-Man 1 and 2. We've seen Spider-Man 1 and 2. We've seen Homecoming and, and Far From Home. And, and my niece said, like, oh, you know, my niece is eight, right? She's like, oh, you haven't seen Spider-Man 3? And, uh, <laughs> and my daughter's like, no. So, like, oh, yeah, that's the one when they, when they get the black Spider-Man suit. Uh, and, you know, like, I'm just like, oh, my God, why did you tell her this information? Fault. You know what I mean? Your you, you That is a thing. Should have shown them this <laughs> year ago. Shown them this year ago. Uh, and then, and then, the, um, then it's like, my daughter says to me, oh, is, um, is the, how old is Tobey Maguire in the, in the new one? I said, what do you mean, how old is Tobey Maguire in the new one? She's like, oh, yeah, because he's going to come in the new one, isn't he? And I'm like, I don't know. You gotta see. You gotta see it, right? Um, and she's like, "Oh yeah," because he's like, he's like twenty something in this uh, in this one. So how old is he gonna be in the new one, right? And I said, uh, "You know, I don't know. Maybe about like forty years old." She goes, "Okay, so Andrew Garfield, how old is he gonna be <laughs> in the wow. new one and stuff?" So it's like they've already kind of hey, been you took told too long. this information by other long. by other kids there. You know what I mean? So it'd be long. interesting to see where they actually. Um, think uh, you know what they think about it. but my my seven year old uh, my son actually gave a jokes review of that of them Spider Man three his his one was like I don't like that film and I was like why he goes there's too many baddies there should only be <laughs> one <laughs> interest there should only be one baddie right so I was like that is the review of the seven year seven year old he's like he's like there's too many baddies there isn't it I think maybe because there's two against one. And yeah. he kind of maybe thinks that's a bit unfair or, or whatever, you know what I mean? Good so, because all the other like ones, it. yeah, <laughs> yeah, all the other ones have been been I've one against one. Got a so. question for you: With mm-hmm. this possible new Justice League that they're cut and pasting together <laughs> at Warner Brothers, do you think how what at what point do you think it's time to get a new Wonder Woman? Um, because. Uh, it depends what it depends what comes out of one or three because apparently they're not going to film that till 2023 right? yeah it's gonna now, take I think a while she's not yeah. old but no know, again, no could we but, leave... yeah have you, you seen red notice right yeah i don't want to be disparaging about people but basically um once pe- once people get to a certain age certain things start to change a little bit right and like mainly like your jowls start to like you know you saw a picture of me like 20 years ago <laughs> how, how skinny my face was right and it's like you know literally like you know your jowls start dropping stuff like that and it's kind of like i was watching some of that and thinking okay in some of these shots she actually is starting to look like a 35 year old woman which is what she is right and, and it's kind of like another few years time is yeah, it she's you know gonna is be gonna like you know 37 or something six 37 but it's not even just their appearance it's just the fact that we have an opportunity now to get a someone an actress who can act oh yeah 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 in the role if, as one woman who doesn't look like a toothpick sorry i don't try to body shame no one but it come on man <laughs> amazon especially if you're trained gonna, all your life you don't look like that especially if you're going to become the leader of the thing right it's like you know you know when they talk about essences of characters right yeah. and it's like you know people always like oh batman never kills and then when he kills people lose their shit basically yeah. right it's like oh he never does that he never does that right and it's like with wonder woman like for some reason they've taken this thing and they're like oh she wears really nice fashion it's like when the hell was that in a comic book ever they've taken 60s. it from like the yeah they're taking 70s. it from the from the Linda Carter one and being like, okay, the whole point is she goes around wearing nice fashion oh, and then you, goes you and fights read, a few criminals. You never read the story arc where Wonder Woman was like an international spy back in the 60s? 
<laughs> she wasn't even wearing a costume anymore. <laughs> oh my days oh my days but yeah but she doesn't do anything like that in these things it's only she only fights when she's in the wonder woman costume which actually potentially would make more sense like if you were fighting villains and you were in disguise maybe that would make more sense and you wouldn't have to bloody block off cameras and shit like that because you're yeah. wearing a stupid ass stupid ass outfit in the middle of the day in a shop in a shopping mall you know what i mean so um i think there is an opportunity but to be honest um the whole thing is a mess anyway so i don't, I don't really give a shit to be honest if, it, if it's you going don't. like that i've honestly got to that stage where i honestly do not give a shit because the only the only thing i think that <laughs> could potentially if if um you know if the uh Robert Pattinson Batman is is good, then that's gonna be uh greenlit for a sequel and then potentially greenlit for another one. So that puts us through to what 2025, mm-hmm. right? Or 2026 or so. So by that time, this whole shit show should be over. And um, and then I'll kind of be like, I mean, like, where's where's this Green Lantern series they've been talking oh, about for God days. knows how long? Yeah. It's like where you know where's where's Green Lantern? I I wouldn't even mind. I, you know, and people say like people say like, oh yeah, you just don't want you know women in these powerful positions. I don't give a shit if Jessica Cruz was the head of the bloody uh, of the Justice League. It would be Love flipping it. badass, right? That's and what I want the Green Lantern movie to be. I want it to be that chick that's got that the Lantern logo on her eye. Freaking cool, man! I want that. Yeah, and it'll be it it would be it'll be cool because she's fighting against this uh you know mental health problem and stuff like that which will talk to a lot of mm. people these days you know what i mean um so so that would be cool but at the same time it's like it seems to me like the people who do this don't know what these characters are right you can't suddenly be like oh okay i i'm a fan of batman so i'm now going to go and take over his mantle as an average person from you know from another part of new york and i'm just gonna take over and be like you know oh i want to fight crime and stuff it's like mate you don't it's not like spider-man you don't make those suits at home yet <laughs> you have yeah, to you have certainly. to bloody make this out of you know this is bloody applied sciences division right. actually making, right. making like what like Jenkins, wayne tech jenkins probably says she's a wonder woman fan but i bet she's only a fan of the tv show not what the comic book version is 100 percent because 84 is basically what the TV show would have been if it had a budget. Yeah. And it, and and this is the thing I always like, I, I always have this kind of problem when people do this. I had the same problem with Matrix and I've kind of argued this so I've done blue in the face now and I kind of, kind of had enough of that there as well. But it's like, okay, if you set your store on, on this, is the, this is the tone of our film and this is the direction we're going and then you decide to go somewhere completely different for the next one that takes me straight out of the movie and just makes makes me think oh, okay this is just a joke now basically right um you know you, it's like with the new matrix okay some people are like oh it's it's too clever for you to understand and stuff because oh, it's like it's so meta and blah blah and it's like it's not. It's like you sold this as being a continuation of that Matrix story, right? But actually, it's something that is separate there from it. And it's, in effect, taking the piss of what we think the Matrix is. Kind of like The Last Jedi is like taking the piss out of what we think the Jedi is, basically, right? Yeah, okay, that's fine. Shane, you're an idiot for liking the Matrix. That's what it yeah. feels like watching that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. And that's the, that's the that's the issue man it's like with all of these kind of things it's like okay you had one the, the first wonder woman and it's like okay um the the next one comes out the tone's completely different it plays out like a hallmark movie it's got some yeah. weird questionable morals in it which make no bloody sense and it's just like it doesn't fit tonally with the with the previous one at all and then because of that you have to you have to basically you know knock 10 marks off it uh, you know, <laughs> uh, for if you're giving any kind of rating, you know, then we're gonna get another one in three years. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That is apparently that is Wonder Woman has been the uh, one of, if not the highest selling DVD Blu-ray of 2021. So yeah, thirty that's a million in book. apparently, thirty million. But this is this is the thing that always worries me, man. It's like kind of like 
they think that that's a good thing, man. It's like, oh yeah, it sold loads. Look how look how great it is, whatever. It's like they don't even look at like, you know, the story and all that kind of stuff, man. It's yeah, like, yeah. you know, money talks. Uh, yeah, yeah, money, <laughs> money does talk. You're right about that. Um, so let's let's go into let's get out of this, uh, you know, of this quagmire. Basically, now. <laughs> let's move up a little bit and go to uh, the book of Boba. So um, last week, the the first episode of Book of Boba uh, is it Boba Fett or Boba Fett? I'm sure Boba. it's Boba. Because they say, Boba. yeah, Boba, yeah, <laughs> because New uh, in the in the New Zealand accent, yeah. Um, so, yeah, you know, we, we the first episode had come out last week, but we hadn't seen it. Now, obviously, there's two of them. Uh, what's your what's your view on book of book of Boba? I'm liking it. I thought the first one was good, but I, I, it took me a second to, to kind of get the pace of it. But this one, the second one, I liked even more, a lot better, and I'm I'm into it. I like the vibe of it. Though. Even though I'd yeah. like, I wish he kept his helmet on a bit longer. Then he mm-hmm. he walks into a room of it and then he takes it off straight away, which yeah, kind of takes away the yeah. Pool. I think that, I think that gives gives you a bit more um, gravitas when you got that yeah. helmet on and just exactly. keeping it there and being like, who's this mystery guy behind this behind this kind of thing? Um, I I really like it, man. I honestly yeah. I really like it. The, the the first one, same. I was kind of like, okay, where is this going? There's uh, honestly, there's not a great deal that kind of happens there in it, yeah. but it's like this one they got like cool aliens and stuff in there, yeah, like it's actually like classic you know, aliens actually kind yeah. of on screen, not just in the background of a cantina. Yeah, and they actually humanized, even though they're not humans, humanized Tuscan Raiders. Like they made me give a shit about Tuscan Raiders. Yeah, as as people yeah. as, as caring individuals, like yeah, I like them now. <laughs> they're cool, <laughs> and they made it kind of they made it better than the way they tried to do it in episode two, where it's like let's humanize them by making <laughs> making Anakin Skywalker just yeah, slaughter, slaughter them all. <laughs> We're supposed to give a like, shit, <laughs> exactly. And then he's <laughs> then he's like, yeah, I slaughtered all of them and the women and the children. <laughs> <laughs> I wish the chief in this one. <laughs> <laughs> mentioned oh, that he yeah. was a survivor. Oh, That's the reason why we're hot. Yeah, <laughs> the Jedi came on, that killed would be all my sick. friends. And my... <laughs> that would be so sick, man. That would be so. We sick. decided yeah. to hide in the desert. <laughs> oh my days! If they just draw something like that, you know, like they draw something on the on the sand, like a yeah. like an image of like you know this guy with a thingy, because that could actually lead into the obi-wan series yeah. kind of thing because boba could maybe think okay that is obi-wan who's done this mm. you know what i mean mm. and it's like let's you know let's kind of uh you know have a have a, a, a like boba is, is now uh the don corleone of uh, of tatooine yeah. and and you've got this guy who's like roam in the desert basically like uh you know, killing Tuscans according to him. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, uh, so that is the joke. Uh, no, I'm liking um, that as well with the whole um, the sort of political side with the mayor and all of that. How that's starting to go? It's getting a lot more interesting, a lot more intricate now. Um, yeah, I, I, I th- there's um, there's a thing like they always show these little leaks and stuff from like what could have been in the Star Wars films and stuff like that. And one of the things that was meant to be in, um in the uh, Return of the Jedi was Luke kind of like properly like trying to find a kyber crystal and all this kind of stuff and making his lightsaber and like making his own like, you know, yeah. first one. But then they decided it would be better that he just lights a green one, for, you know, to show everybody. Or was it the blue one he lit up? I can't remember. Um, the, no, it was the green one, wasn't it, in Return of the Jedi, right? <laughs> Return of the Jedi was a green one. Yeah, Return of the Jedi was a green one. I think it was a green one. I can't Too remember. Long. Um, but yeah, so so we're gonna get uh, so ripped apart for that. Great permission that we get ripped yeah, apart. Yeah, you ain't exactly. Star Wars bad. You know what color lightsaber? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Blame the blame the uh, the Disney guy. Um, but, but anyway, <laughs> uh, so the so the thing is like um, in this, I thought it was quite cool that they were like here's this you basically got to go on this on this journey after this lizard goes up your nose basically to go and find oh, this branch that was crazy. right <laughs> right to, oh. to go and find this branch right and it's like once he's found this branch it's like you go to this dude in the middle of nowhere and he tells you how to carve it and shit yeah. to make your weapon right and it's like he's <laughs> now got this badass weapon now that he can go and like you know fight people with which is just but, crazy uh, 
he's barely used it though because when we see him as Boba, he's not. He's just using his blasters and shit. Yeah, I think it's what potentially going to be one of these things like he's going to end up coming up, you know, against like multiple kind of you know tribes and all this kind of stuff. Because I think the time when we see him, he turns up and he's um, he. Uh, this is just after. Um, you know, obviously he goes down and is Bib Fortuna and he gets rid of him, or whatever. But uh, he was trying to find the child, right? At that, at, you know, yeah. before that, he's trying to find uh, the, you know, the baby Yoda or whatever. So maybe there's going to be a backstory around that, around the Imperials. And, I bet you know. at some point in the story, shit's going to go down and he's going to lose his glasses and he's going to open up a case and he's going to see it. <laughs> he's going to take it out. That like, out. This is the, look, the real weapon I need to use. Yeah, I, I love the way he just went to this thing and there were just like these, these absolute total, like, uh, you know, asshole aliens, right? And it's just like, <laughs> I'm just going to wreck these guys and nick their, nick their stuff, man. It reminded me of like when, um, when Arnie walks into the bar and just like wrecks all yeah. these guys and, nick, <laughs> and nicks the motorcycle, right? It's <laughs> just like, uh, just absolute joke. Didn't that guy who was sitting there with that woman, I was thinking, is this dude like a young Han Solo or something? Because he bloody looked bloody similar to like, a, you know, uh, something like that. But then I was like, oh, this occurs after Return of the Jedi, so you know, clearly, clearly, it's not, uh, it's not Han Solo. But yeah, there was no, there was no backstory to those two randomers who were sitting in that, uh, in that thing, man. So I, a lot of people have been kind of saying this is like uh, Dance with the Wolves kind of thing, um, you know, uh, with the with the Tuscans and stuff. But I just like that. I would actually like to see it on when the whole series is done, like on on my projector. Because I want to see it like big, like because yeah. it's got that kind of thing that it's got, you know, that those desert landscapes and all that kind of stuff. It just, just you know, just looks cool, you know. So um, yeah, it's um, you know, it, it's one of those things like you could, you could you could pick on it and say, oh, I've seen these kind of scenes there where they teach people who are so called primitive to use, you know, mechanical stuff so many war films where they kind of teach people to like use tanks and stuff mm. like that and they have no idea how to use it or you know uh different mechanical stuff and you, you could pick at it like that but uh, you know it's it's a nice pleasant it's kind a, of show some kind tropes of work so it's okay to use them and is it weird that i want one of those um sand melons or whatever the hell they're called Oh yeah, I get thirsty <laughs> every time. I, yeah, I get thirsty every time I see someone drinking. <laughs> yeah, either that or you dig up that flipping, um, you know, oh, six yeah. arm bloody creature. <laughs> thing, you know I mean? Yeah, the Goro freaking more combat type thing. <laughs> yeah. I was like, what the hell? Yeah, that's that cool. was literally oh, when I was watching. I was like, this is like some Jason and the Argonauts. Yes, that shit. was also <laughs> <Yeah>. I was thinking <laughs> stop animation, Sinbad type shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah, Sinbad, that is the one, man. Sinbad, yeah. So, so it's cool, man. I like it. It's 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 fun, man. It's not, uh, you know, um, wow. it's, it's gonna not going to be. Are we ever going to get a Sinbad reboot? Because that was back in the day where people didn't hate Arabs and everything. Didn't they try and reboot Sinbad with um, with Brad Pitt, and then it didn't it didn't <laughs> get made. I'm, I'm sure. No, no, no. Seriously, I'm sure. I'm gonna find it out for next time. I'm, I'm pretty sure <laughs> they tried to. They tried to reboot Sinbad, a blonde with Brad Pitt, Sinbad, and I think it was actually after Troy, like you know, when he he was on over the back of Troy or whatever, and they were like, yeah, you know, they're gonna make Sinbad. Because nowadays people would have gone nuts, man. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. uh, you know, but um, but yeah, it just obviously it wouldn't, it, you know, wouldn't work. Yeah, wait a second. Um, no, they actually did make it with Brad Pitt, but it became animated. Sinbad, oh. Legend of the Seven Seas. I remember yeah. that. I remember that. Early 2000s. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Two <laughs> thousands, yeah, because they're like, oh, we can't actually send put you know the actual dude as uh, you know. As the, as the guy, I guess. But yeah, you know, whatever. Um, so um, let's go back to some DC there for a moment. Um, Peacemaker, man. <laughs> Do you know what? I ask, I'm such an idiot, right? I'm a member of so many different WhatsApp groups. A lot of them are work groups, yeah? Yeah. Right? So I accidentally sent 
this peacemaker thing that I sent to you to, to a work group, <laughs> right. right? And then I got messages back saying, 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 lol, why, why are you sending this? And I'm like, what the hell have I sent? And it's the bloody thing about Superman's poop fetish and stuff, you know what I mean? That I, so I sent to my bloody work, right? Which now, you know, people are going to think, what is this weird guy? So they see you differently now. They definitely see me differently, yeah. So um, apparently, Peacemaker um, is basically like um, uh, he's going to be one of these guys who he kind of like deliberately mocks like other kind of heroes and stuff, kind of Deadpoolish in a way. I, I kind of think. So we have Aquaman, who basically he says that he you know he pays to have sex with aquarium fish, and Batman um, has is responsible for countless innocent deaths. He refuses to kill the Joker, which Ed agrees with. <laughs> True. Uh, and, <laughs> and Superman, who supposedly has a poop fetish. I don't, know, I, I don't know how that even fits. I can understand the other two, but how does that even fit there? Um, th- there's going to be a shitload of one-liners in this. I think this is g- just going to be like, he's just going to come out with one-liners about just, you know, why you know when they're comparing him to somebody or or whatever you know it's gonna be like you know but this guy does this and this guy does that i'm in a weird place with this show like i'm gonna watch it but i haven't really liked the trailers so it's like it's Mm -hmm. gonna look horrible but it could be funny the dollar's gonna be there james gunn's good at all that so i don't know In in general do you think that tv series have good trailers uh, mm, mm, not, I don't know. I'm sure I've seen, like, seen trades for Ozark that have looked good. I'm sure they've been good ones, but yeah, they don't they don't really stand out. The fact that I can't think of a single mm. significant one particular. I, yeah, I was thinking about this when you were saying this there last time that you know the trailers didn't look great, and I was thinking, okay, this is a TV show. What show can I think of that has had like you know, really good trailers. Um, and obviously, like, you, you know, you have the recent stuff in memory, don't you? So I couldn't think of anything that really kind of stood out as like, oh, this has got great trailers. I mean, I, I remember the... Um, Game of Thrones ones looks good. Yeah, I, I remember Game of Thrones stuff was was decent. But then the other stuff there, I don't know. The other thing is, um, <laughs> the other thing is this. People have been saying to James Gunn, um, like, Mate, you do know that this is only going to be released in the USA and F4 people are going to see it around the world. Um, but he's like, oh, no, we've got plans for it to be released in different places and blah, blah, you know, kind of like they did with Titans and all this other stuff, I guess. So yeah. this thing is going to be pirated to shit by the, by the rest yeah. of the world because HBO Max have not got their finger out and bloody, you know, you know, sorted it out. So um, I, I, I know I'm kind of... I, I know it's going to be hilarious, but I don't know if I can watch it with, like, you know, with family around and stuff. It's probably going to be, yeah, like, no, so rude. <laughs> it's going to be so freaking rude. Yeah, um, some of these American channels, we have to sort out their distribution because, like, you heard about all the Star Trek stuff, the issues that have been going on with that one. It's on yeah. Pluto TV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is thing. Like, I, I, somebody said that to me in the in the in the film uh, forum, right? And I'm like, Pluto TV. That is like some random app that you you get yeah, on that on just your shows, Amazon Fire. <laughs> that shows like uh, like those mystery investigation TV shows, just like Andromeda <laughs> rerun. Like the, the the stuff that networks don't want anymore. So they just give it away. What a crap yeah. TV that they have. And, and I thought it out. was like I thought it was like a streaming, like you know, you can select it or whatever. But yeah. it's like an actual TV. Yeah, you can do, but it's also like an actual TV channel as well. So it's yeah. literally like you can just have it running kind More, of Yeah, there's a Dog the Bounty Hunter channel on there. <laughs> it's just like dog people the bounty I just want to watch Dog the Bounty wow. Hunter 24-7. <laughs> there are probably some people who want to do that man to be honest there probably are some people there are there are some people who literally will just watch stuff like you know kitchen nightmares and that's you know, bake off yeah. and all that kind of shit and literally just watch it repeat again and again and again Mad. uh you know at, at you know uh, ad infinitum kind of thing so um apparently there is a batman novel which is coming out which kind of 
came out of the blue like nobody even bloody knew it was coming out uh don't know whether it's a graphic novel or an actual book or whatever which is a prequel to the new batman film oh. so that is going to be coming out around the time the new batman film kind of comes out so it's going to go through like you know uh the wayne's obviously getting killed again and uh, you know <laughs> yeah. why he turned into <laughs> why he turned into the way that he did you know uh, all that kind of stuff um you know um that, the I think story we just pissed off that they just they ran away and that's why he's mad <laughs> we just have that he was a off, they ran away <laughs> he was a and he decided at the to opera. use <laughs> he just left him. yeah <laughs> they they left and they left the home as well yeah. and they and they were and they were philanthropists and they basically like made Gotham this amazing nice place and he's like oh do you know what I'm going to use your money to destroy this this city <laughs> <laughs> right and make it the most horrible place on this planet yeah that would be jokes man that would be jokes um, you know if eventually I would kind of like to um, you know they they had this they had this one uh, comic book back in the day which is um, which I kind of think they copied this um, this Star Trek Deep Space Nine episode from, um, where Batman is basically like in um, he's in Arkham Asylum, and they're saying to him like, you know, Joker's not real, Scarecrow's not real. Oh, he's you know, patient. Calendar Man's not real. You may, you know, you keep saying you got to fight all these people. It's not whatever. And basically, it's Hugo Strange has trapped him in there and like you know they've given him this kind of thing to make him think that he's not you know whatever and obviously they had that deep space nine episode where it's kind of like there was an episode talking of, about his life and stuff like that yeah there was an episode of buffy as well this is all in night so <laughs> which one came first where yeah, she was in an asylum and it was like vampires aren't real you idiot what's wrong with you you just kill him yeah this is probably later than that to be honest because this is probably like late 90s early 2000s because it's got the better quality art in it um, you know, and the and the Hugo Strange with the little beard that comes like this, yeah. rather than uh, rather than you know the old the old look that Hugo Strange had. So yeah, this may have come afterwards. So so Batman's story may have, may have copied uh, Batman Buffy. Ripped off you never Buffy. know. Batman <laughs> it's ripped official. Off Buffy. Was, we'll make it <laughs> it's official. official. Yeah, it's official, man. Um, uh, so uh, apparently, also the Blue Beetle costume is going to be um, a proper live action costume. Um, mm which is a good and a bad thing because I don't know, it could be good if it's made by, um, by the guys who make all the other costumes and make the Marvel stuff, uh, you know, uh, make all these like amazing costumes. Uh, or it could be made by the same people who make the CW costumes, oh, uh, in which case it's, yeah. it could look. Well, if it's close to the concept art, then it's going to be cool because the concept art looks real good from what I've seen the costume. So if, 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 it's, if that is how it's going to look, then mm. Chef's Kiss. But if it ain't, oof. Yeah. I mean, what we do know is it's probably going to be a teen version of um, Ant-Man and the Wasp uh, because apparently Bumblebee is going to be in it as well. Yep. Um, if, if it so it's the other bug movie. It'll work for our bug movie. <laughs> it'll work for this one. Yeah, it worked for this one. But this time we've got teenagers. So, yeah. so, so we get another market, <laughs> in there. Latino teenagers. Uh, so, yeah, exactly. So you guys are now in, uh, yeah, in, uh, you tell know, me, in trouble. Tell me about Bumblebee. Them. I don't, I don't know much about. I don't know much about Bumblebee either, to be honest. Oh. I could, I could say that I know a lot, but to be honest, it's probably been in some, some comic book somewhere that I read. But you know, I, I barely like, uh, I barely know enough about Blue Beetle, and it's the Blue Beetle that I kind of know most about is not really the Jamie Reyes, which is the one that he's going to be playing. Yeah, it's more like the yeah. Ted Cord one, who was the head of the yeah. Cord Industries with the, you know, with the, um, and then made the Blue Beetle costume, costume and stuff. Whereas this one's with the Scarab, right? So the Scarab gives the power, whereas it's, it's not a Cord Industry suit. So, so um, how, if it is a, what, what's the origin? Is it alien in this one or is it ancient? I don't know what it is in this film. It could be anything. Yeah. It could even be that Black Adam uncovers some shit. That's what and I'm saying. If they find a, it should be an know, a, it could be ancient and an alien thing that's just been dig. They could have linked it into 
Black Adam, which they probably could, but it's DC, so I doubt they have. Exactly, exactly. They're not going to, they, they, they don't think that far ahead, man. Yeah. They literally just like one step, one step <laughs> like that. Let's get, let's get one foot ahead of the other. One they, hand doesn't so, know what the other hand is doing. Exactly, exactly. So that's, uh, yeah, that's basically. I don't know. They could, I mean, they could very easily be like, oh, we discovered the scarab, you know, um, there was, you know, Dr. Fate had something to do with it, even though it's, that's not canon. Say so Dr. Fate had something to do with it. Some magical kind of stuff went into there. And then obviously then, you know, Jamie Ray discovers it and that could be the end credit scene. And then you've linked to another bloody film. That's what you actually do to make people want to see the next film. It's, it's easy. Yeah, exactly. So, and if they do that, then I know that uh, yeah, yeah, which, somebody's listening to this. Which film comes out first? Black Adam. Black, yeah, Black Adam. Black so, Adam's coming out this year, man. So post credit scene could be the something to do with yeah. the scarab. I'm hoping, I'm hoping they've learned something and it's kind of going around. I mean, this year is flipping crazy. We basically got, basically got uh, well, let's talk about that later. Yeah, yeah, we're going to yeah, talk we'll about what we're looking forward to. But um, yeah, uh, obviously live, live action kind of costume and stuff like that there as well. Um, there's a lot of information that seems to be coming out about the Alien series, which is apparently going to be on Hulu, but I guess... Um, what did um, Why the Last Man come out on? It's called Star or something. Is it Star or something Disney, like that? Did the Disney Plus channel, Star. Saying this would be where Aliens comes out. Because even... Um, so I think that's probably where, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's the show? Oh, there's something else coming that I would not expect to be on Star, but apparently it will be, but I'm blanking on it. Oh, it's going to drive me mad now. But yeah, yeah, it, for us, it, it's, it's on Disney Plus Star. Yeah. Yeah, so that you know the alien series coming out on there a lot of information coming out a lot of kind of art uh with like you know forearms xenomorphs and stuff um apparently it's gonna be a lot about ai and um synthetic human synthetic hybrids um which you know they're making and um human xenomorph hybrids and stuff there as well um basically the the concept behind it is similar to what of this one Russian billionaire is doing at the moment where it's like you're you basically want to live forever so you can kind of upload consciousness into something else, which is what Ed's wants to do anyway. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. Up, up, <laughs> upload consciousness into a synth, but also at the same time have an organic component as a human. So what happens is as and when, like, say, like, you know, you get uh, you know, a problem with your hand or whatever, then your hand gets changed to a synthetic thing. And then you have a problem with your, you know, you, with, with your jaw or a problem with your teeth or all this stuff just keeps getting replaced with synthetic stuff. Um, however, the, um, the organic stuff that they're trying to make and kind of replace things with is where the alien thing kind of comes in, where they're messing around with genetics, to try and organically uh, uh, elongate human life. So you've got, an AI kind of thing against a, uh, a you know, a, a genetic component kind of thing. So is this like Watani, the, the company I, I that was always trying to get hold of the aliens? They finally did it. I would assume so. I would assume so. Yeah, Way, Wayland Yutani. Yeah. Um, but but I don't know. I mean, what time? I, from what I read in there, it didn't say anything about the time frame. What <laughs> you know? What's Russia's the time frame? Russians are crazy. You heard about them trying to clone the Thracian DNA that they found? <laughs> trying to make a new army. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. These are, the, they, they will literally just do any, just do anything. Um, you know, and there's like awesome. <laughs> the stuff that we don't, the stuff that we don't know about is probably some crazy shit that is going on. Man. Just to like, explain you know, for people at home, Thracian DNA for the old, like, ancient warriors from whatever thousands of years ago they dug mm. up and found like a grave of like soldiers buried in somewhere and they want to use the dna to breed a whole new <laughs> modern army of these creatures yeah soldiers. i love it i love yeah. it it's some comic book shit i, would, I love I honestly it. would not be surprised if there's shit like that going on right now i don't know if you remember I, why am i talking about star trek all the time man this is like a this is like a uh your show right yeah. <laughs> basically so uh it, there's this one star trek episode where um they try to they basically genetically bring back 
um Kalis, who is like the who's like the spiritual leader of um of the Klingons, right? And he's not properly Kalis, he's just clone like really shitty clone basically right but i would not be surprised if they're doing shit like that right now right where they're just like okay let's just bring back these like you know genghis khans and shit like that you know know that it's possible with animals so you know that there's a lab in every major country that has the money to do this shit you know everyone's even though it's not legal by the global yeah agreement you know everyone's doing it chinese are doing it russian americans somewhere in europe yeah it's like you heard about this fusion stuff which has basically come out of nowhere right i remember when i was a kid they were like fusion is impossible it's like you know they say oh you like to say oh things are improbable but this is impossible right we can we basically got a finite amount of time and a finite amount of energy because we can never harness uh you know have free energy and harness what the sun does we can never create temperatures high enough right now it's like <laughs> basically like uh, you know the, the chinese just created this kind of they created this um uh this this case thing right where they basically increased the temperature inside to seventeen thousand times hotter than the sun right which basically means that any molecule in there basically would just explode and create infinite energy right continuously that's, right. that's scary because like, you know someone's going to screw up and that's half the planet is <laughs> floating away thing is the the british french americans chinese have all got these projects going on at the moment yeah. and the french reckon that they're going to have by 2035 they're going to have one of these power plants up and running that does this which basically basically means infinite free energy Right, you can literally just leave like every light on everywhere in the world. Free for the government, not free Free for the the government, not for us. Yeah, not for us. (laughs) Exactly, exactly, exactly. Yeah, that is the thing. You know, nothing's ever free. Russia will sabotage all of that because they want the monopoly on all of this because they they that's how they get a lot of their money. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, that is true. That is true. That is true, man. But you know, that um, that I I don't know. You know, I don't know if you've ever seen any of this electric car kind of stuff but they've got a lot of these um you know these uh uh, these kind of charge points and things like that um and bp have started buying up all the charge points so they're kind of like they know that their oil money is going to run out at some point and they're just going to make money off all this you know charging shit basically so they're tired of suppressing the technology now they're just trying to buy up yeah now they're just buying it now they're just buying it all up man um Let's go back to a um, let's go to a you know Sony Marvel property um, in in Spider Man and uh, there's been rumors going around all over the place that you know potentially we're going to get Andrew Garfield coming back um, you know with Morbius being you know being delayed um, oh my which, god yeah uh, several <laughs> times Morbius Morbius being delayed um, and unknown reason why but you know. It's been delayed because they're reshooting something to make sense. Um, Hopefully. You know, as you know, as Ed was saying to me, like, is it they're trying to make something make sense in there and they make sh- venom kind of, you know, shot. in the time that it's been delayed, they shot No Way Home and released it. <laughs> From <laughs> it should have been that long ago, so far yeah. ago. Yeah, they need to do reshoots to explain to me because I'm dumb. Uh, how the hell Morbius knows who Venom is? Exactly. Because unless I know that, that's going to ruin the entire movie for me. Not as yep. if it's going to be ruined itself, but it's probably, uh, unless they explain to me how he knows who Venom is, yeah. right? And he could go up to somebody else and say, I'm Venom. That person could be like, who the hell is Venom? Yeah. I don't know who the bloody hell Venom is. What are you yeah, talking about? I, What's the matter with you? Venom never showed <laughs> no news broadcast with people saying Venom is struck again. Like, no, no one really knows. No, no one knows about exactly. The dude walked into a club as Venom and nobody gave a shit. It's <laughs> a, co- a crazy so, costume. Exactly. It's a crazy costume. So come on now. To make this bloody film yeah. make sense, man. And why is um, Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man existing in that world as well? Because Yeah, he's yeah. Old. Yeah, they like, need to CGI that out, put Andrew Garfield Spider Man on there instead. Yeah. That'll make more sense. Andrew kind of potentially wants to do it. They can let him do Spider Man 3, let him finish his story off. He'll be happy. Everybody else will be happy. You I'm know. okay with bringing Andrew back and having this harbor pocket because what I was worried is that they were going to ruin the Tom Holland one. 
and ruin everything that they've done with the MCU Spider-Man and how he affects all of that by having him playing around over there because you can't really control what Sony's idiot creative does. Mm. But if they just have their own thing, then I'm okay with that because, you know, if, if, if it all goes wrong, it doesn't affect the good stuff mm. over here. But, you know, I, potentially well, it could go f- kind of fun. So yeah, I'm all right. I'm okay. I really like the way that they've done the the Tom Holland style now because basically, in effect, he started off like the opposite way that Spider-Man usually starts. So he kind of started off doing this crazy fantastical stuff, going off into space, fighting aliens, you know, <laughs> fighting, mm. fighting against the other Avengers, all this kind of stuff. And now he's getting grounded at the same time that Kingpin is rising back up, at the same time that Daredevil is, is on the scene there again, at the, yeah. at the time when Kate Bishop has come to replace, uh, you know, Hawkeye, they're all in the same place at the same time. You know, this could be a cool thing that he's Kingpin, doing his own please. thing. You know what I mean? That is the thing. So, you know, you've got, you could have all of that going on, you know, the Daredevil stuff and all that. And then he doesn't, you don't need to worry about them, you know, getting into all the the fantastical kind of avenger stuff you can leave that to uh to you know the the, the marvels and you know and all, yeah. all that kind of thing man so um i think there's space for both of those universes man um and i and, like Garfield. You know, i like you know i've rewatched the major spider-man films two is still a, a mess but there is good stuff in there and Garfield's good yeah I, I like it you know yeah do it and and there's some weird rumors going around there as well like um, you know they've got, they've, they're asking Emma Stone to do to do yeah, Spider no. Gwen and uh, and <laughs> Anya Taylor no Joy, sense. Anya Taylor Joy to come as Black Cat as you know. But I don't think they're going to be Black for Sony, or would that be for the MCU? I would assume if she was going to go for anything, she'd probably go MCU because yeah. um, she's I'm become okay a very big it. actress in yeah. that time okay in between. With that, yeah, and I think she'd probably more likely be a Silver Sable character because I think they're yeah. not going to bring out Black Cat so soon after you know Catwoman is in is in Batman because because uh, yeah. Marvel have got a brain and they know that you audiences get you know get confused sometimes <laughs> about stuff. Um, so because there know. is that little bit of romance there, they might want to hold that off because too soon after MJ, because people are going to be like, yeah. <laughs> Zendaya, yeah. <laughs> if he says that halfway through, that would be like, oh my god, that's breaking too much, too much of the of the fourth wall, mate. You need to kind of just shut that down a little bit. Mm. Yeah, that's the thing, man. That somebody was saying like it'll be hilarious if um, if they go to a multiverse and, and Timothy Chalamet is, is sitting there as Spider Man with Zendaya. <laughs> Zendaya oh, there as well, and it'd be like so uh, easy, yeah. <laughs> exactly that would be uh, that would be an absolute destruction. So um, yeah, let's should we get into our uh, winners and losers twenty twenty one and uh, and you know what our, our our kind of things we're looking forward to in in twenty twenty two. What was your winners and losers in twenty twenty one? Winners, obviously Marvel killed it with Sp- Spidey No Way Home obviously the triumph of the year but it was a rocky road to get there because everything didn't really hit for me this year like even though I didn't hate Eternals I can't say I loved it either so that was a bit of a misstep especially with that cast they could have done so much better with that uh, yeah and I've actually got to give a shout out for DC as well because I nearly forgot that Snyder Cut did come out this year or last year so I mean 2021 yeah, and that was uh, the highlight for DC because Suicide Squad was all right. It was entertaining, but yeah, it didn't really reach the high mark I wanted it to. But Snyder Cut, I did love. Yeah, it's a million times better than the than the than the, the theatrical he, Joss he, Whedon. He, you shall be named, <laughs> which was which was yeah, uh, yeah, uh, you know, and and that was that was like a hundred times better. I think. You know, Eternals for me, I, I don't hate it as much as a lot of people do, just because I kind of looked at that stuff with, um, you know, the, the speeds to character, and I was like, mm. that is just so well done, man. Like, you know, yeah. they, they've done it in a way that, like, 
like you know that all the other ways that people have done it is they've slowed everything down around it and it's just like oh this person's going so fast that everything else is slow this would just mad like literally just like you know coming in hitting from here and there and you can i just i thought that was pretty damn cool um shang chi as well i say that was a nice little um, little film as well well. that was a that was a winner there for me loved Um, it in the cinema but re-watching it i only love half of it it kind of slow it becomes less interesting to me now once they go to the fantasy china land yeah it it, kind of gets a little too mm. Mm. it gets it gets a little yeah it gets a little bit kind of you know odd and I think a lot of that avatar lost their bendery for me in a bad way I think a lot of that is to the Chinese audience to say like these are the mythical creatures that you have grown up with and known and and this is you know get to see it because it didn't get really yeah exactly oh yeah it did get there anyway (laughs) yeah because you know unless you're you know Chinese somewhere else in the world I guess you can uh, you can watch that so so yeah for me that was that was good uh i would also say um i gotta give a little shout out to doom patrol right now doom patrol i fell off this show like you know um uh, a couple or so years ago so i watched the first series and i was like this is batshit crazy right but um i couldn't watch the second series because it was just like it's so hard to get into and the third one has basically amped it up a level of this is absolutely freaking nuts like literally yeah so i'm just like okay i actually like this like it's quite uh, it's like if you if you watch it and you kind of think okay um does any of this make sense then nah forget about it right it's it's ab you know it's like it's like the guy the main guy his daughter is basically an an ape looking a girl who looks like an ape yeah so right and and yeah, she's yeah. like got <laughs> she's got crazy crazy powers and they go on these mad adventures and stuff like that and it's just like um you know uh brendan fraser has really like got into his role and stuff it's crazy you're how telling me i have to go back to that now because I, I did kind of like this, the, the yeah first season. if you say say you had to be in the mood for it hmm. you had to be in the mood to be like okay i wanna so sometimes if i watch something that is super depressing because i like watching my true crime and stuff yeah you know? but what's something like oh this guy's murdered 10 kids or something like that i'm just oh Love my it. god Someday. just give me something that shit crazy now <laughs> i'm just gonna watch <laughs> to, to erase that from my from my mind basically right um so uh so then you just watch doom patrol you're like w- what mind came up with this because i'm i'm quite often told by people mate you say some random shit yeah but i'm like if, if this if, if if i met the person who made this i'd be like seriously you're even a thousand times more random than i am and about you know yeah. it is i don't even know if it follows the comic books i've actually got like um uh i i, I basically um from the business i i've got this uh, new card that we use on the business right and it gives you points every single time and i've been using those points just on amazon to buy <laughs> shit loads of graphic novels like literally like i've bought I, i've probably how many i'm probably about 20 30 odd graphic novels wow image um uh you know image dc ones um i finally got into the batman who laughs the whole graphic novel bought all of that read the whole thing um constantine i i'd started reading constantine again um, I, I used to read it back in the day, but like, you know, in the in the 90s or whatever. And I just thought, let me check out this Rebirth Constantine. And the first Rebirth Constantine is all about gin and stuff like that. And I'm like, this is jokes, yeah? So it's <laughs> just like going deep into Constantine stuff and Swamp Thing and things like that. So um, I yeah, need a this... Neil Gaiman written Constantine audiobook Because he, he, only he can do that es- esoteric stuff to that level, man. And he's doing amazing. It story. is. Okay, so if you like that, then there's a thing called Sandman Universe, where basically there are uh, kind of like one-off or, uh, or, you know, stories that are made, um, which is like, you know, graphic novel lengths are like 150, Mm. 200 pages um, of people in the Sandman Universe. So they've got Lucifer, Swamp Thing, Constantine, all Neil Neil Gaiman stuff, um, which is, you know, and all of it is pretty cool. So there's a Constantine one, uh, the Swamp Thing one's pretty cool as well. 
um lucifer ones you know i haven't read oh. yet but yeah um one question was titans 2021 titans 2021 um that's a loser of would, the year then for, <laughs> that's the, the loser one. of the year that was Me, mm. the biggest loser of the year is not even titans the biggest loser of the year as in 2020 was the bloody warner brothers man who have become <laughs> the biggest the, the most idiotic people literally on this planet because uh, we got can't forget that basically they did put the matrix out there in <laughs> you know into, in 2021 uh. and also and also basically were like after like so much pressure put the snyder cut out um but then also at the same time i just like you know um, let's go and green light all these random ass projects that, you know, have, you know, nothing to do with anything. Um, I, yeah, i got to kind of say as an entity, Warner Brothers, uh, once again, man, just, you know, I'm just so glad that Black DC is going to get sold. Well, the whole of, the whole of that is going to get sold to, uh, to, to Discovery. Um, the, Mad you know, decisions, isn't it? It's like they had too much control over everything in DC when it started. And now it's like, okay, that didn't work. So now let's not have no control and just let's let the, the, the asylum just run itself. And it's yeah. just all over the place. It's just, yeah, just absolutely, absolutely mad. Got well, mention, so what's your biggest... Got to yeah. mention, though, as hero, even though I'm the Marvel guy, it has to be said, like the Marvel TV side of things. It's triumph, man. All of that was in 2021. We're getting Hawkeye, uh, WandaVision, Loki... Falcon all just churned it out and out just, and they kept it all consistent. I love it. Yeah, it was it was generally a consistent level. Um for me, like I said, uh, Hawkeye's the only one really that I kind of you know really enjoyed out of all of those. Um crazy. I don't know. I might revisit one division in a year or so's time because I I was never sold on it. I'm, I'm even from the end, I never was sold on it. Um, and I kind of I had my ups and downs with it. I honestly cannot get it when people say this is this is amazing. I can understand if people say, "Oh, this is all right," and I liked it and it's good or whatever. I like this and that. But when people say, "Oh, this is a, a, amazing," and the way they've done it is so great, I just I can't I can't fathom that. So I don't know. Maybe I'll maybe I'll revisit that. Um, but yeah. So what's your uh, what was your so your biggest standout, obviously, Spider-Man: No Way Home, right? Baby, yeah. Um, Hell yeah. So I think we'll give that we'll give that unanimous winner of uh, of 2021, right? Yeah. Um, and then, <laughs> um, and then, and then, loser of 2021. I don't know. I got I got to say Warner Brothers, man. I'm not going to say DC because uh, there's so many comic books that came out last year that were flipping amazing. And if you guys love DC, yeah. then you can read them. Well, as but, a property. Um, it's something that's produced as a film or TV show. Titans. Titans. How do you fall off? How do you just... What a letdown. What a letdown. What I think I think the problem is is that you got two 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 types of people in this world, right? One group of people who love Batman and one group of people who hate Batman. There's no in the middle. You either love or, or hate it, right? And the people who are running Titans are people that freaking hate Batman, right? <laughs> so, they're, so, so they're the ones who, if you hate Batman, you will freaking love this show, man, because it is like, um, it you know absolutely destroys the mythos of <laughs> Bruce Wayne, <laughs> Bruce Wayne, Batman. Uh, and if you like that, then uh, then fair enough. So, but it crams a killing l- joke into like 15 minutes of, of no death in the family. That's a family, yeah. yeah, yeah. Killing uh, Robin and then bringing him back to next episode. <laughs> just no, it's just Rushed horrendous. Just the whole thing is horrendous. Uh, Young Justice, pretty good. Um, you know that was uh, animated series there that came back in in twenty twenty one. Um, that was pretty decent there as well. Um, and yeah, uh, you know, apart from that, that was that was pretty much pretty much there or thereabouts for for DC, but a lot more stuff coming out in 2022 what are your things that you're looking forward to in 2022 please tell me you've got a list of everything coming out in 2022 so so we've got batman we've Obviously, got the that may actually be the highest fix i am really looking forward to what they're going to do with doctor strange and how what other mad things they're going to throw into the multiverse of madness like 
yeah, that, that, I think that's going to be a lot of fun. But as a film for a film that I'm looking forward to, I'm, I'm could be over my expectations could be too high, but I'm feeling like this is going to be on that sort of Dark Knight level. It's looking like it could be. Reeves is capable another... of it as a director. He loved the Planet of the Apes film, so he, he can do it. There's another TV spot that came out today that shows Catwoman fighting, and it is flipping badass, right? It is literally like, it is bad. So, you know, we've always had this complaint, like, that basically the way that they show fighting is like, okay, uh, this some woman, like, literally picks up a man and throws him across the room or whatever, (laughs) right? Which is, like, flipping unrealistic. Um, But there are certain ways. They've obviously thought about, okay, how would this person fight against somebody else and the way that she's doing it is she's like basically using acrobatics and being Mm. super quick and then hit and move hit and move it's really cool the way they've choreographed it so i am really looking forward to that we've also got morbius next year right (laughs) oh of course Uh, (laughs) (laughs) we've got morbius next year we've got dr strange and the multiverse of madness we have um obi-wan kenobi coming out next year um which is a, a series obviously uh, we have um, we have the Marvels um, and uh, sorry Marvels is twenty twenty three. We have um, what's the name uh, Miss Marvel. Marvel. Um, we also I need, to, uh, I need to see a trailer for that before I can get excited. Proper trailer. Ant Man's oh, out this year though, isn't it? Um, I don't think so. Uh, what Ant Man really? three? Yeah, I think that's tw- I think that's next year. Quantum Mania's next year. Quantum Mania. Let me let me just have a quick quick look. Um, so um, we also have uh, the Flash. We also oh, have twenty twenty three. Yeah, we also have um, we also have the Flash. We have Black Adam. Uh, oh. we, <laughs> we have we have Spider Man into uh, not into Spider Man. Spider Man. Some what's what's it called? Spider Man. A <laughs> uh, part one, right? Yeah, um, across the Spider Verse or something like that. Yeah, um, and can you? Um, I actually listened uh, to because I've I've been off for the past week, so I listened to your guys' podcast last week. Can you give Mo a virtual slap from me? Yeah? Because he said he said something that may take the shine off the Batman is Spider Man across the Spider Verse Part oh, One. Yeah. yeah, I'm sorry, but come on now, that is oh my goodness me. This like, yeah, yeah, I never that's, understand. That's a statement. That's a statement and a half, man. That is a statement and a half. It's it's bizarre. (laughs) It's bizarre the stuff you love. That is that is a statement and a half. Um, but yeah, I mean basically we've got got tons of comic book properties. For Um, love and thunder, which is something I just have no idea what that's gonna be. Like I know the some of the story elements that they're throwing into it that was mm -hmm. female for Natty Portman, but how are they gonna handle that plus all the other crap they're throwing into it? And plus, why yeah. Taika Waikiki with his mad sensibilities, with his eighties? Yes. What, what is it gonna be, man? It's gonna... Yeah. Um, we also we also we also forgot. Um, we've got Aquaman next year, oh, and man. and we also have that girl next year and we also oh, have this year you mean? Uh, we're in 2022 this year, now. This year 2022 <laughs> yeah this year uh we also have, have dc's league of super pets right oh my that and, even count jesus <laughs> <laughs> and the one that we're all looking forward to uh everywhere is the um uh, sylvester stallone film samaritan Right. So, which is where he basically plays this old dude with like superpowers. He's basically oh, going yeah, around like, like, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? So, yeah, I, I don't know, man. This is just like, uh, yeah, this is just a bit, you know, a bit nuts. Yeah. My, but, um, uh, my biggest thing, yeah, Batman, my, what I think could be a wild card though is I'm going to go four over Doctor Strange just because I just have no idea what clusterfuck that's going to end up being. I yeah, I, so I got to say my number one, obviously the Batman, uh, which I'm probably going to see multiple, multiple times. Um, I, I don't know um, with yeah, what's your um, wild card. My okay, so my wild card is going to be Morbius, and it could 
I'll tell you what. <laughs> because, okay, just imagine, imagine if they... <laughs> Please explain. Please explain. Okay, okay so imagine if the whole film is, is a shit show, but then Andrew Garfield then turns you- up. <laughs> right then obviously then obviously the obviously the, the you know the whole uh, the whole thing about it is like everybody's like you gotta go see this man <laughs> it's got it's got venom in it it's got bloody andrew garfield spider-man they create the this more, new universe you gotta be part more, of it you gotta see this the more we talk about it the more i'm got feeling i have to be convinced that they're reshooting stuff to fix the fact that it's come out at the wrong time that things have changed and they have to incorporate other things into it. They have to be reshooting. Yeah. Another film that is meant to be coming out this year, but I've got a feeling it's going to be delayed is Black Panther 2. Yeah. Now that Same. I think because there's a lot of problems with um, what's the name? Not Lupita, the other one. What's yeah. the name? Well, I think what's it's more just called, they had a bunch of COVID um, outbreaks so they had to halt filming a bunch of times so i think they're to halt they're to halt um i know what's her name letitia letitia right isn't it lupita yeah. Le, uh, yeah so there there's a lot of issues there with her man because she's like a bit outspoken about uh, about covid and stuff and obviously they don't like that um so so yeah so i would say yeah i'd say my most looking forward to is definitely definitely you know uh batman wild card is um morbius and least mad man looking forward to and man's next year man oh, i said mad man <laughs> oh a mad man yeah and and my, least and my... looking forward to is morbius for me Has, is... <laughs> oh, they can't be any good man come on oh i do you know what i forgot uh sandman Sandman, I'm really oh, looking forward to this yeah. year um and i just back. honestly I take the back Morbi ain't my least looking forward, least film I'm looking forward to. It's it, it, oh, it's either Black Adam or it's actually no, it ain't even Black Adam. It's Aquaman, straight up. <laughs> Aquaman, I don't give up. a fuck about Aquaman. I've got to say, even though I am the DC guy, I've got to say Aquaman as well. Um, Shazam this year as well. Uh, I think Shazam is next year. I think Shazam is next year because oh, they got black. Uh, you know they got. Um, you know, I mean, uh, they should have at least, yes, next year. I mean, they need to finish yeah. filming it because those kids are going to be like seven foot tall by the time they finally finish this filming, yeah. right? But, um, but yeah, I mean, uh, I, yeah, I also got to say uh, Aquaman is probably my least looking forward to. Um, with Black Adam, even though I don't really want to see The Rock, I'm just like, I've got to see Dr. Fate on screen. Um, and from what I've been hearing, like, whenever I've seen magic on screen, it's always been portrayed like, badly like you know it's just like you know okay these these are magical people who create spells and all they flipping do is fire shit at each other like oh this you know bloody me <laughs> it just always Doctor always Strange did portrayed. it look amazing folding buildings inside out like paper mache yeah. and doing all that shit they actually had the circle shit the many times i've seen that drawn on paper and thought they could never make that in real life <laughs> they did it yeah. it looked cool yeah but yeah but this is the thing man you gotta be creative when it comes to spells right like you know like, i want to see like flipping some dude magic a t-rex out of nowhere and just flipping <laughs> Munch this guy so, and just like you know just like completely yeah. mess with this dude's mind so he's just like you know uh like you know stuck in this uh you know uh, uh, stuck in this kind of my you know <laughs> mind portal and stuff yeah. like that you know i'm actually curious to see how they're gonna betray um what's that other dude called was it hawkman or what was hawkman yeah 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 how that's um, gonna how that's gonna look yeah well that's the thing like if you're gonna have Hawkman, you're gonna have to have Vandal Savage in it, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like, I don't know. I mean, who's the bad bad guy in this? Anyway, it's meant to be Black Adam, right? But he's an anti-hero kind of, you know, um <sighs> kind of thing. So who's the real bad guy in this? Um could it be Warner Brothers? I don't, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't I don't know. Um, you know, uh, for me, I'm ne- I'm never gonna never really going to say bad about um uh, you know uh, thor love and hunt uh, and thunder and, and taika watiti because i i can understand why people like that some people like that genre it's, it's not for me it's definitely not for me um but yeah, you did like Ragnarok, why... did you love Ragnarok, but some the hatred in I'd... your heart just wouldn't let you love it would it, it just I, I, the, the 
I might like Love and Thunder better than I like Ragnarok. I think the reason why I didn't like Ragnarok is because the way the Hulk was portrayed. Um, because it was like the, the Hulk for me, right? I read this thing. I'm, I had the misfortune better than he was in Endgame. <laughs> better than in Endgame, yeah. But I think, you know, when I, when I read this, uh, I read this um, article um, online, and it was basically like saying like why the Hulk is an inappropriate person to be on screen and stuff like that, because it's a, uh, I don't know why the hell I read this article. It was like, it, it's apparently the Hulk is a, a domestic violence allegory because it's like a, a, a bloke who basically like, um, like if you disagree with him, he goes, he goes absolutely ape shit and, and just smashes stuff. And oh the only person, God. the only person who can bring him back is Betty. Who's like the, you know, like the 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 battered wife kind of thing, who basically is able who he to never like, touches. you know, like who he never touches. Yeah, he beats the shit out of everybody else. But it's kind of like they're saying, like, oh, it's a domestic abuse like allegory and blah blah, and that's why he's, you know, he shouldn't be. All, and he's not. He's really not. But he's more you know a binge drinking saying. allegory. The guy that gets drunk on a Friday night that's just causing <laughs> fights with everybody, and the 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 poor girlfriend that has to calm him down. Like, no, oh stop God. it, Terry, stop oh it. My. That's what he, he's not worth it. He's not worth <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would be hilarious if that happened in the Hulk, man. He's fighting, he's fighting against Red Hulk, and he's like, he's not worth it. Nah, leave me alone. That would be hilarious, man. Uh, yeah, that, um, so yeah, that would be, um, I, I don't know. She Hulk's coming next year, right? As well, I guess. Um, this year. And uh, yeah, this year, I sorry, think. as well. So yeah, especially um, since um, they they've admitted Moon that Knight. Uh, they're, they're Moon Knight, bro, be everywhere. Oh, about wow. Moon Knight, yeah, bro. Moon Knight as well, yeah. Of course. So, yeah. So, yeah. so Moon Knight as well. So we've been forgetting like the TV properties and stuff. Um, Again. And and should should we give cautious middle of the road to Peacemaker? I don't know. <laughs> like, yeah, we'll we'll see. Wait and see. <laughs> we'll see what happens to we'll see what happens to that when that uh, when when that comes out, man. So um so yeah, guys, let us know what your uh, most what's, anticipated is of the year. What's happened to the Gotham PD thing? Wasn't that supposed to come out in, in time for the film? Like, to go parallel with it, but I have heard nothing. Maybe it's been flipped with uh, with a penguin. I don't know. Uh, maybe maybe that's what they're doing. Um, maybe. Maybe. I don't know. You never know with Warner Brothers, man. They can they just <laughs> they do whatever. Yeah. I guess it's HBO Max, so you know, they could do a very good police procedural just you know get the same guys who make law and order or whatever or or the wire or something and just change it to gotham yeah. that's it that's it <laughs> you know <laughs> but instead but instead of all these you know all, all the all the stuff that's going on just like mysteriously all the drug dealers just get beaten up every every night <laughs> sure where the police have to clean up <laughs> yeah exactly it's just like what the hell is this man this dude he's still alive but he's like paralyzed from the neck down because you know because because yeah. vigilante doesn't so kill you know a more law and order approach would actually be more appropriate because the guys have already been captured they just need to do the sort of courtroom stuff <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly exactly all the courtroom stuff and things like that it's like oh yeah let's investigate this bloody you know or they could they could make it so they're like they're getting so pissed off because they're being left with like investigating parking tickets and all this kind of stuff because the the bat family are actually dealing with the with like the big cases and things like that yeah. and, and now they're just stuck with like oh you know Actually, somebody's the more I think about it shouldn't <laughs> if they're just picking up all these bad guys can't isn't it that they just have to let them go because whatever batman's just leaving people tied to either yeah. unconscious on the street or tied to lampposts or dangling from whatever but what about the evidence of whatever crime they supposedly have done <laughs> Most of the time there isn't any. They just left the guys hanging there. So they're gonna have to just yeah, let yeah. these guys go. That would be that would be classic. That would be absolutely classic. And then he's that's why he gets so pissed off because he's <laughs> having to catch these guys every single Again. time. It's like I caught them in the act doing this thing. You know what I mean? That would just be brilliant. The fingerprints. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. That's the thing, man. It's like, you know, um <laughs> just like just like the madness of of um of you know uh <laughs> Um, like standard policeman just walking up to this thing um, and that law and order music that dun dun like that and then basically they walk up and they see this half man half crocodile hanging 
I'd oh, remember, shit. I remember playing, I remember a lamppost and shit. You know, it'd just be hilarious, man. The funniest shit, like literally Killer Croc sitting in the dock like this. And they're like, my client has, oh, has not done any, has no evidence <laughs> against him and stuff like that. It would be hilarious, man. It'd be absolutely hilarious. Um, but yeah, if that comes out, that comes out, whatever. But apparently Penguin's coming out this year. So, so we will see. Um, and, and, um, What's it called? Save Swamp Thing is, uh, is, uh, oh, sorry, Restore Swamp Thing is, is started to trend as well. Ooh, as well. Good, <laughs> People are like, good. so, so let's see. You never know. You never know. Um, we have to go back to um, Harley Quinn as well. We never, I don't think either of us finished that, did we? Even though I did no, like it. No, no, no. Um, we did have a message about that, like several podcasts back saying, if you guys checked out Harley Quinn and stuff, we just, I just need to do it, man. Apparently, there's a, some kind of crossover with CW as well. So I might. <laughs> I might watch that. <laughs> I don't know. Um, and yeah, and 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 I guess the final shout out we have to give to you is Superman and Lois hopefully oh, not yeah. being, you know, destroyed um in, in the second season. So we'll we'll have a look and see how that goes. Um guys, let us know what your most anticipated is for what you've heard from us. Like literally everything is the most anticipated, like uh, you know, from uh, and and you know what you thought your winners and losers were off um uh, of 2021 um once again if you have any questions there for us you can put it on the uh facebook page you can pm us on that there as well which is dcvs marvel podcast um you can also email us on dcvs marvel pod at gmail.com and also uh go to the voltron network um uh, youtube channel which has like the um the, the shows on there as well in a video format um if you want to hear more from ed's there as well you can catch uh, ed's on the uh, on his other podcast there as well yeah, if you ain't sick of hearing me yet and check out talking at the movies also on the virtual network just talking about all things movie tv the general across the board yeah and you've got you got january now so january the month where Every studio dumps their shit, basically. So yeah. you guys are gonna have to, <laughs> to watch some comedy, comical films. <laughs> yeah. Com- comical films. Uh, my my sister in law apparently has seen this film called The Three Five Five, which she says is like the worst, the worst yeah. film that she's seen. For it's like um, it's it's kind of like Born, but with like Jessica Chastain yeah, and some other know, people. Trailer, yeah. Um, she said it was. Yeah, she said it's absolutely atrocious. So, uh, so yeah, so... Jessica Chastain, man, she was on a cool trajectory a few years back, and now after like popping up in X Men, it just seems to be downhill after that. She believed the hype, didn't she? That's what happened. Because basically, what happened was is that she started going off on one about everybody, like saying like, "Oh, you know, um, uh, you know, women should be leading this," and like where uh, you know the way that Zack Snyder's people you know women in his film is like terrible and she just kept going like her her only thing that she would ever talk about is is these issues mm. and now of course like what happens is is that uh, say for example you make a film and it's like okay look you know you're not the best fighter let's get somebody else in to do the fighting or whatever let's get this choreographer you know he's uh you know he's like the best choreographer in the world let's get him to like do your fights and stuff like that She's the type of person who'd be like, no, I need to run the whole thing because I am the, you know, I, I am I'm the person who knows everything. We should be running everything, blah, blah, blah. And I think she just ended up believing her own hype. And that's the problem of what's happened, basically. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's all gone wrong. But anyway, um, enjoy watching that. And uh, we'll, we'll catch you guys again next time. <laughs> there you go.